uh, after I got to the hospital, I went to the seventh floor step down unit and I was uh, waiting there. Um, the donor lungs were coming from Kansas City and they had yet to go fly, and fly out and get them because of some weather uh, issues. Uh, in Kansas City, it was icy and, and snowy. Um, so as, as a result, I actually ended up staying, um, waiting in, for a few hours uh, after I got to the hospital before I went into surgery. Um, and of course, during that time, you know, I was just kind of on edge. Uh, the first first hour or two, I was, you know, I was calling people, and then uh, after I'd made some phone calls and things, I, you know, I, I had, I was just kind of sitting and and waiting and and you know thinking, you know, about the the life changing surgery that was about to take place. Um, you know, I, I wondered if. You know, I I wondered if I would wake up or or if everything would go okay. If I would, you know, if this was the last time I was gonna be able to see my family and friends and talk to my friends and you know, and I I remember you know I remember thinking um, I I would try to concentrate on you know waking up and and thinking about that first breath I'd be able to take and not needing oxygen and, and you know, hoping for the best. Um, um, I ended up going into surgery. It wasn't until I, I think around noon that I was, they started prepping me and, and the lungs were coming back from Kansas City. The, the surgery actually started at 2 p.m. Uh, and I, beforehand they took me in and they started uh, some IVs and uh, placed an epidural in my back and uh, started an arterial line in my, my arm. Um, and then after that, uh, they, they wheeled me into the operating room, and I don't really remember much after that. I remember parts of, the, of being wheeled in there and um, seeing the, the bright lights from the surgery room. The surgery itself took about six and a half hours. Uh, it was done by Dr. Brian Myers. Uh, he was one of the thoracic surgeons on here at Barnes Jewish Hospital. Uh, the surgery um, went really well. Uh, there wasn't any major problems. I wasn't. Um, they didn't need to put me on a heart lung bypass machine. They were able to to uh, do the surgery they, is, um, they take one uh, the surgery is done um, typically they take one uh, the worst lung out first and then I survive on the remaining lung while they sew one of the new lungs in and then once that one is, is uh, innovated and working properly they take the, old, the other second lung out sew it in and, and make sure everything's okay and the next photograph is a picture of my, it's a photo of my old lungs. Um, these photos were actually taken by, by the thoracic surgeon, Brian Patterson. He, or excuse me, Dr. Myers, he, um, he, he was kind enough to take some of these photographs after he had stitched in my lungs for me. <laughs> the, uh, the photograph here of, of my old lungs, you can see some of the, just the trauma and the, the, uh, damage that um, the infections, the repeated infections, have caused. Um, you know, some they're they're blackened and there's it almost looks like there are pieces missing to the lungs. Um, the, the the lung on the left is actually my right lung, and it was the one that uh, kept collapsing. And um, so, yeah, the the damage is very obvious when you when you look at them. There's lots of scarring as well. So it's no wonder I couldn't breathe. <laughs> uh, the the last picture in this series. Um, this is this is while I was getting de uh, extubated. Excuse me. This is while I was being extubated. Uh, I had woken up approximately 14 hours after the surgery on Christmas morning. Um, the doctors were, were really amazed at how quickly I was awake and aware. Um, 
having undergone such a major surgery and um, only two hours after after waking up I requested that the ventilator be removed um, so I could breathe on my own with my my new lungs I remember the first breath um, after I was extubated I I was you know still a little groggy and and my chest and things were feeling tight and uh, of course I was a little sore <laughs> but um, you know it was it was nice as a precaution they they leave you on oxygen but um, but it, w it was nice to know that I, I didn't really need it at that point and um, and I could obviously breathe a, a lot better um, you know as time goes on and, and the recovery process happens uh, the lungs expand and kind of settle in a little more um, and and you can really tell a difference at, at that point in uh, in the ICU when I woke up I'd also have I'd also had chest tubes placed to remove some of the excess fluid that had accumulated around the lungs and the chest cavity um, and I remember those made it a little bit harder to breathe too so um, after I I had the chest tubes removed a, f a few week, uh, week or so after the transplant. I could tell a, a pretty big difference um, as well in my breathing. Um, so that, uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely been quite an experience, um, and and I couldn't have asked for a better Christmas gift. I would joke around about, you know, people would ask me what I wanted for Christmas and. Yeah, I would say I wanted lungs, um, but I'd never guessed I would have gotten them. So it was it was an amazing Christmas gift.